So I have a support base specifically for the double tilt holder. Uh, if you look on the base of the double tilt holder, there's a slot right here. Okay, that slot lines up with this pin here on the support base. Okay, so when this goes in, it looks like this. Okay, and then it can't rotate or move anymore. I'm going to take the end off right here, the cap off. I'm going to place this dish cover underneath. So this specific double tilt holder uses a hex ring locking mechanism. So we have a special tool needed to remove the hex ring, which we keep stored here. Okay, so if you look here at the end, end of this holder, it's probably hard to see, but there's actually a hex ring or a hex shape uh, machined into the end here. The other end of this just has a tapered uh, end and that's not, obviously not the end you want to use. So this okay, goes in like that. And then it doesn't take much here. I'm just turning maybe half a turn. Okay, and you can see now I have on the end of that the hex ring. So the hex ring uh, and the washer in there, which we'll also see in a minute, are expensive, they're made of beryllium, so you have to be very careful when you're handling these not to damage them or lose them. So I'm just gonna set this down right here. So now I need to get out the uh, anti-twist washer that's also in the basket. For that, the best way to do it is with the vacuum tweezers. Again, I go over here, turn these on. And now you can see I've got my anti-twist washer out. I'm just gonna set it down here. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my vacuum tweezers. And now we have to put the sample in. So the samples we're gonna use today are uh, specimens prepared by FIB. And so they are on OmniPro grids. So I have some of them here that have been stored uh, in a gel pack box which is how I recommend that you store these grids. There are other methods to store them, of course. Okay, so you can see here, these are molybdenum grids. I don't know how easy it is to see, but you can see here, I've got the rounded edge of the grid, okay, facing down and then pointing up are the fingers. So when I load this into the holder, I want to load the grid with the fingers basically pointing this way, so pointing away from me. Um, the reason for that being, which we're not going to cover in this demo, but the reason for that being, um, if you end up doing any EDS analysis, that gives you clear line of sight to your detector. So to get these out of here, you need uh, to use a sharp pair of tweezers. Hold down with my other hand here. Okay, and now I'm gonna set this down just on the lid here. Okay, and now I'm gonna use the vacuum tweezers to pick that up and put it into the basket. Okay, so I'm gonna orient this how I want it. You can see I have the fingers oriented like that. Okay, so turn on my Vacuum tweezers. Pick up the grid. And now it really helps when you're doing this um, to use two hands. This is a little hard to do because I'm looking at the camera while this is happening, but. Okay, so I dropped it in there. If we look at this now, you can see the grid is not quite rotated correctly. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to use the vacuum tweezers just to uh, reorient it so I have the fingers facing uh, away from me and the grid is not as rotated. Alright, so I've got my grid oriented a little bit better in the basket. So hopefully you can see that there. I've got the fingers basically pointing straight away from me. So now I have to reassemble uh, the washer and the hex ring. Get the light off of there. Okay, so using my vacuum tweezers again, I'm going to pick up the uh, washer first. That has to go down first, obviously. If you look at the washer, if you look closely, you can see there's actually two little nubs uh, at 180 degrees from each other. So those nubs align with holes in the basket at roughly 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and position this in. Again, usually you want to do this with two hands. It's tough to do with just one hand with the camera. Okay, so it's not quite in all the way. What I can do here though is I can actually take my tweezers and just give this a tap. Okay, and actually now it's kind of fallen and settled into place. Um, and that's what you want. You want this sitting all the way down or otherwise we're not going to be able to hex ring in all the way. So now the last part is the hex ring. So now when you're doing this, putting the hex ring in, it's critical that you put the hex ring in in the proper orientation. Okay, so if you look at the end here of the hex tool, you can see I have the ring on the end there. The right side of the ring is a little bit wider than the bottom or the left side. Okay, so that wider side is the top of the hex ring. So that goes in from the top and the uh, narrower side goes down. So if you don't go with a proper orientation, then you'll end up misthreading this ring. Okay, so this is correct right now. So this is going to go in like this. Okay, so it doesn't take a whole lot here to thread this. And again, I would normally do this with two hands. Okay, so once it's seated, I only had to turn that maybe half a turn, three quarters of a turn before it it goes in all the way, so it's not a whole lot that it ends up having to turn. Okay, but now everything is reassembled and uh, the grid is loaded into the double tilt holder.